Abby Cupcakes. Today is the fourth anniversary of the podcast. The first episode, Poe and Carla and Cupcakes, Nice to Meet You, aired on April 28th, 2017. I am now 49 years old, and wow, how the world has changed since then. I checked my Scrivener notebook for the podcast, and I've written over 100,000 words for this podcast. Since I read Annabelle Lee on that first episode, I am going to read another Poe poem on this short episode. I'm also going to read one of my own, as I did on my live episode number 64. I've also tacked episode one onto the end of this episode for those newer listeners that have never heard it. I apologize for the second House of Leaves episode not being up on the feed yet. I'm working on it, and I expect it to be live promptly. My heart is to blame. (laughs) I'll explain. My little shadow and honorary podcast producer, you've probably seen her on Instagram, Ellie the Dachshund, developed a hernia after I posted on social media about the upcoming House of Leaves episode, and I lost the ability to concentrate. And as soon as the vet said they had to operate ASAP, I lost the complete ability to think. And of course, my immune system decided to jump in. I'll save you. (laughs) So, I'm in extra pain and extra inflamed on top of all my fretting and worry. Thanks, body. (laughs) Appreciate it. I am beyond happy, however, to announce that Ellie had her hernia surgery yesterday, and she came through with flying colors. She's resting happily in a really cute soft cone on the chair next to me in my office chair. And my heart is full, my anti-anxiety medicine is working overtime, and so we will be exploring the Navidson record promptly as promised. For now, let us celebrate today and celebrate Ellie's good health. Beyond all else, I need to thank you. I am not podcasting to become famous or internet famous, to make money, although the amount I make from Patreon and Spreaker is a blessing, and I'm beyond grateful. Thank you so much. Or anything along those lines. I just want to write. I want to express myself and use my writing and my voice to reach and make someone happy, to entertain someone. And I have. It it just blows my mind when I say that. (laughs) I'm reading that off my script and wow, I have. I receive feedback and reviews and in private that my podcast really makes you happy. That my sharing my personal stories of trauma and healing and my reading stories to you has helped you feel not so alone. That means the world to me. I know that's just a trite phrase, but it really, really does mean the world to me. Thank you from the bottom of my big introverted heart. And here's to four more years. I want to do something special every year for my R anniversary. But this year, I have Princess Ellie's recovery on my plate. And I have my immune response to that and to my second Pfizer vaccine which I received last Friday, and I have the upcoming House of Leaves episode to finish, and I don't want to step all over that. That's important. So I decided to keep this year's anniversary episode simple. A little me, a little Poe, going back to episode number one. I'm also catching up on uploading all the episode scripts to Patreon, which I owe my patrons. The scripts are available to every Patreon, (laughs) excuse me, every patron, well, let's try that again. Every patron, a dollar and up. It really is, does mess with the brain. The, the company is Patreon. Y'all are patrons. Okay, move on. It's available to every patron, a dollar and up. I've decided as a further celebration this year to add another tier to Patreon. Actually, I wrote it that way. It's not true. Add more benefits to the existing tiers. For patrons at $3 and up, I'll be uploading pronto and regularly on the same exact publication schedule, all episodes ad-free. So these patrons will not only have their own RSS feed to plug into their podcatcher app, they will have access to all past and new from now on episodes without ads. The regular feed from Spreaker will be going on like normal, nothing will change. I'll continue to make certain that the Spreaker ads are as unobtrusive as possible. I always choose the minimum required for the length of each episode. And that's how that works. It's based on by length. And then I can pick and choose from there how many. 
and I always choose the minimum. I don't want to take away from y'all's enjoyment. So now y'all will have an ad-free option. It'll take a little time to have all the episodes uploaded and update to Patreon because I'm working off of satellite internet up on my mountain. I will notify y'all on Facebook, Twitter, theremightbecupcakes.com, and Red Edit when the Patreon ad-free feed is absolutely complete and live. The Patreon link, patreon.com slash theremightbecupcakes, is in the show notes. I also owe my lovely existing patrons, patrons, see, there you go, patrons, (laughs) patrons, <laughs> stickers, and fun mail. I will be contacting you this week to make sure your addresses are correct, so watch for that. And I'll also be making sure your info is correct for episode shoutouts and link in your own stuff in the show notes. I'm going to be hooking up with Patreon's new internal merch creation and shipping program. It'll be so much easier for this easily distracted podcaster to treat you as you deserve. Thank you for all your support over this last four years cheering me on as I set the podcast up and I was nervous. Chase and Jill, especially for buying my mic and my pop stand for me as a surprise. Y'all joining the Facebook group and the Goodreads group and the subreddit, following me on Twitter and Instagram and supporting me on Patreon, as well as leaving reviews for me on Apple Podcasts and Podchaser. I'm basically five stars on Podchaser and Apple Podcasts because y'all are so kind to me. Every single one of these things, every join, every follow, and every review, it they move me. I mean, I'm a big old softie, y'all know that. And they do, they move me when they happen, much more than you know. I get any one of the above alerts on my phone or laptop. New follower on Twitter. And I'm floating for the rest of the day. I really do. <laughs> I love you all. I do. Thank you again from my whole heart for taking this journey with me these past four years. I'm truly looking forward to the next four years with you. I have fun doing this. I really get mad when my health gets in my way. I want to publish more often. Um, I'm hoping that the new changes in medication and the new testing that we're doing is going to allow me to publish more often. Stay for today's short poetry episode and stay for a replay of the first episode where you can learn why cupcakes. I am beyond grateful that y'all enjoy listening to me with my erratic schedule driven by my health, like I said, by my most unusual subject matter compared to other podcasts, by my introverted obsessions and deep dives. As I said, I love you all. I really mean that for my weird INFJ heart. First for today. One of my poems that I did not read on my live episode, episode 64, in which I read a collection of my own poetry in process. It's called, My Kingdoms, My Rivers, Learning to Integrate My Truth. I've got rivers, and I yearn for them. I've got a kingdom, and it yearns for me. I've got a queen, and she yearns for no one. I have to bring that lady back to me. She's me. Trees and valleys all spread before me, beautiful waters flowing to the sea. I am the king of all I survey. I do not see my queen before me. She's me. I wrote that in autumn of 2019, and this poem was written during my uh, CPTSD which is complex PTSD, exposure therapy for my sexual assault. Uh, Exposure therapy was when I had to retell the story of my assault, which I told to you in episode 34, this girl just had a bad date, over and over and over to myself and my therapist, then listen to my own retelling during the week on a recording of the sessions. Do not try this without a trauma-trained therapist, I beg of you, because it can be dangerous. I honestly said, how much longer do I have to do this? Or something like that, more than twice, crying to my wonderful, kind, loving therapist. So don't play around with this. I'm not suggesting you do this. But as grueling as that was, I am much better, stronger in so many ways on the other side of it. I can talk about the assault and the police misconduct and the stalking in a calm manner with regulated emotions, without my physical body responding as if I'm now in danger in the present moment, 
it's a true gift. And that poem, I think, was a partial realization of the changes I was going through during that exposure therapy. I chose this poem because it does relate to back to the past episode, episode 34, which is one of my top 10 downloads ever and has been consistently through the life of the podcast, but also because it relates in mood to Poe's Annabelle Lee, which I read in the first episode, the queen flowing to the sea, a haunted kingdom. Mine's internal, not a grave by the sea, but complex PTSD is being haunted in a way and your past self and your traumatized self can seem as ghosts. I chose this poem of Poe's for this episode because it speaks to introversion, and I spoke about my being an INFJ in the first episode. It also speaks about seeing horror in beauty and beauty in horror, which this podcast has definitely been about for the last four years. I also chose a poem instead of a short story because Poe's first published works were actually poetry. His first public work was the anonymously published book, Tamerlane and Other Poems, in 1827, when he was only 18, credited to, quote, a Bostonian. And if I ever get my own cat, it'll probably be named Tamerlane. (laughs) From childhood's hour, I have not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source, I had not taken my sorrow. I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone. And all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still. From the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me roiled in the autumn tint of gold, From the lightning in the sky, as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. Poe actually wrote this poem in the autograph album of Lucy Holmes Balderston, who was Lucy Holmes at the time. It was not published in his lifetime, so it was obviously meant to be a private gift to her that time's equivalent of a high school yearbook signature, though much more elaborate and personal than keep in touch and love you like a sister. (laughs) It was published initially by Scribner's Monthly Magazine in September of 1875, 26 years after his death. To lead you into this replay of the first episode of There Might Be Cupcakes, I'm going to leave you with a quote from a great book. Y'all know I love a good quote. There have been many that have led in and led out of every episode. And this is a special one from the 10th anniversary celebration of Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Waterston. If you're my age, you must likely love the comic Calvin and Hobbes. And you know how I love language and language play. So this is the perfect anniversary quote to lead into my fifth year. Happy anniversary, y'all, from an anniversary book. And I quote, I hope some historian will confirm that I was the first cartoonist to use the word booger in a newspaper comic strip. Bill Waterston. (laughs) I was going to end with that quote, but something really serendipitous happened, and I love serendipity. You know that. My friend Nina Instead, the host of the wonderful true crime podcast Already Gone and Don't Talk to Strangers, and the co-host of the really cool baseball um, podcast, Dead Ball, with my friend Tim Scott, let me know on Facebook that today is the 91st anniversary of the publication of the first Nancy Drew book. Ah! The secret of the old clock. I didn't do it on purpose, I swear. But I am well chuffed to find out that there might be cupcakes and my very favorite strawberry blonde detective share an anniversary. (laughs) thank you nina so i will also end leading into this rebroadcast of episode one with the most apropos quote of the from the secret of the old clock for cupcakes happy birthday nancy and happy birthday cupcakes to quote nancy drew read 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 that's all i can say It's all supposed to be there for fun. It's all supposed to be-
couldn't laugh. And sometimes when I need to reset, remember, you know, and I because I get freaked out like everyone else, I need to reset. I think about fucking cake, cake, the preferred dessert of celebration, cake. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings. What's there? Cake, cake, cake. There might be cake. No matter where you go, there might be cake. Somewhere in your journey tonight, there may be cake. Hi, and welcome to my brain. I mean, there might be cupcakes podcast. I'm Carla, and I'm a 45-year-old that lives on a Virginia mountain near the Appalachian Trail. Yes, I said 45. That means I'm old enough to be some of y'all's mom. And yep, there's the y'all. I'm from the American South. So there's going to be some dropping off of the end of words on this podcast. There's going to be some drawling. See, there's some drawling right there. And a little fast talking. I'm going to be working on the fast talking. There's no promises on the rest. That other voice you heard briefly in the intro is my friend Greg Barrett, uh, the author and comedian. There's links to buy Barrett's funny, insightful stuff in this episode's blog entry, and I cannot recommend it enough. That common routine inspired the name of this podcast. Get up and do the damn thing, because there might be cake. Well, cupcakes are even better. They're portable. They come with their own wrapper. They're infinitely customizable. So many reasons. So, me. I'm an INFJ on the Myers-Briggs personality inventory slash type indicator. Introverted, intuitive, feeling, judging which means I am the rarest and strangest personality type. Only 1% of the population is estimated by researchers to be in this cluster. You will quickly come to find out, probably in this very episode, that this will come as no shock. How INFJ translates to the podcasting life is, I never stop thinking, ever, 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 ever. I love learning, and I devour new knowledge, and then I want to share it all over the place, but I'm an introvert. So um, things get weird and awkward. So just sharing it voraciously with my microphone right now is heaven. I love you guys, but I can't see you right now. So this is a good start. With all this peculiar knowledge I obtain like a book vacuum, I connect it together. Everything's connected. And I see those connections all the time. Usually where other people might not. Very much like John Nash. Much, much less mathy. Which leads me to one of my very favorite authors, with whom I started this episode, Edgar Allan Poe. According to Book Riot, Edgar Allan Poe falls on the scale as an INFP, the healer, whereas my type is considered the counselor. And of course, the Book Riot link for the Myers-Briggs rating for 101 authors is in this episode's blog entry on the site. I could tell from an early age before my psychology and counseling degrees, before I even knew what a psychological measurement was, that Poe and I shared so much in common. Introversion, intuition, strong feelings always at the surface. Add to that that horror is my favorite genre and always has been. Well, that's what you call a kindred spirit. As I learned more about Edgar's life, I saw that he too was misunderstood sometimes. He was eccentric, as I have been since the womb, and both of our eccentricities have sometimes been seen as kooky, weird, crazy by others. I was this spooky smart kid in elementary school. Uh, They actually had no idea what to do with me. They didn't want me to skip grades because I was socially hampered enough on my own. Thank you very much. Uh, Teachers would pull me aside and do advanced math, spelling, and reading from textbooks dragged out of the book morgue, you know, fourth grade stuff in second grade, etc. Well, when I breezed through all that, finished all the way through fifth grade, the school threw up their hands and gave me permission to, if my current work was complete, request a hall pass at any time and just wander the library. Our elementary school was open format, so... I could see everybody, and everybody could see me. So I could see how very strange I must have looked to the teachers and other students. Here's this short little kid bebopping around the library shelves alone, lost in thought, arms full of books. You know, and this is a place and time when all library excursions, and you know, at that age, were done in groups. You went as a group and picked out one book, maybe two, or you went and sat down crisscross applesauce, and the library and read to you. You did not go and get an armful of six or seven books by yourself and then sit down somewhere and read by yourself. 
So yeah, weirdo. Uh, yeah, I was no stranger than Edgar. You know, dark, gloomy Edgar in his long black coat, pondering his upcoming book review assignment for the newspaper and his never-ending drama with his editor while striding the streets of Richmond alone, brooding, confused. I got him. I write for the website for the comedy history podcast, The Dollop, which I recommend. Every Halloween, I have taken it upon myself to host Dollopween, and I post a spooky history item every day of October. For one day of Dollopween in 2015, I recorded a dramatic reading of Poe's challenge to grief, Annabelle Lee. We also share grieving a young person in the family's death, but that's another story for another time. For now, it's only about Annabelle. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child when she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I am my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee, so that her high-born kingsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher. And this kingdom by the sea, the angels, not so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know in this kingdom by the sea. The wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love who were older than we, both many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my, my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, and her sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Loving history and information and all as I do, I am enraptured by the fact that we have this poem and Edgar's handwriting still extant. You may view it at this episode's blog entry, and also view a love letter from his wife and cousin to him, which I also recorded originally for the dollop.net. Yes, I said wife and cousin. Virginia Clem married Edgar when he was 27, and she was 13. And by all accounts, they had a very happy but short-lived marriage and a cozy family with her mother and Edgar's Aunt Maria. Virginia, who was even more shy and reserved than Edgar, and preferred to stay home and keep house for her love, contracted tuberculosis at age 19. She died at age 24, one year after writing this poem. This poem was written at a time of great social conflict for Edgar, and therefore for his wife. All of New York City society was in a tether, not seen outside an Edith Warden novel. People throwing around claims at their dinner parties and social calls that Poe and the Mrs. Osgood were having an affair. Meanwhile, the misunderstood thing was still a thing. Poe seemed to piss people off wherever he went. Virginia was extremely sensitive to conflict, and I have that in common with her. I can't bear to be around fighting or aggression, in huge part because of an autoimmune disorder symptom called hypersensitivity to stimuli. In Virginia's weakened state, thanks to tuberculosis, all the social and professional ruckus I can imagine only made everything worse for her. So, she wished for a peaceful cottage for them, free from strife. And her sweet message held its own sweet code. At the time, 1846, acrostic love letters were all the fashion. If you look at the original document on the website, you'll see that the first letter of each line spells out her beloved's full name. Please excuse the creaking noise. My desk is an antique secretary, the one my dad used to use for his childhood homework, and I inadvertently leaned on it a couple of times when I recorded this for Dollop Ween. 
I left the sounds in because they sounded so much like my great grandfather's rocking chair. So use it. Close your eyes and imagine raven haired, pale faced Virginia sitting in her rocking chair, perhaps with a laugh rug, reading just to you. Ever with thee I wish to roam. Dearest, my life is thine. Give me a cottage for my home and a rich old cypress vine. Removed from the world with his sin and care and the tattling of many tongues. Love alone shall guide us when we are there. Love shall hear my weakened lungs. And oh, the tranquil hours we'll spend. Never wishing that others may see. Perfect ease we'll enjoy without thinking to lend ourselves to the world in its glee. Ever peaceful and blissful we'll be. Happy St. Valentine, Edgar. Your Virginia. Thank you so much for listening to this first episode of There Might Be Cupcakes. Please stay and continue to grow with me as I learn to speak more slowly and edit more cleanly. Future stories will include local and personal true crime stories, including the time I could have become a murder victim. I'll also tell you about Forensic Anthropology Lab and how it felt to hold my first human skull in my hands. I'll tell you real ghost stories, my own experiences from the three different haunted houses I have lived in, including my current home. And I'll tell you about the time I helped to investigate Waverly Hills Sanitarium and was touched for my trouble. I'll talk to my friends, some of whom you know, and I'll talk to some of you and hear your stories. I'll talk about knitting and chronic illness and how wonderful and awful people can behave when you're disabled. And I'll school you on how bizarre it was to be a kid in the 1970s and 1980s. It was the land of shag carpeting and Lisa Frank stickers. You have no idea. Our den and kitchen in my parents' house was lovingly decorated in two tones of orange. Two tones of orange. On purpose. In books. So many books. You have no idea. So many books. And horror movies. And with that, I'm going to leave you each episode with a related book recommendation, which will be linked in this episode's entry on theremightbecupcakes.com. If you click through it to buy it at Amazon, you support both this podcast and my book, Dragon Habit. And hey, the more I read, the more glorious stories I can tell to you guys, because the more John Nash connecting the dots I can do. Win, 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 win. And that's another reason cupcakes are fantabulous. I get one, you get one, everyone gets one. You win, we all win. And with that, please listen to my wonderful friends, colleagues, and objects of Kermit Arms Flapping Fandom. For true crime, there's Aaron and Justin at Generation Y Podcast, Charlie and Allie at Insight Podcast, and Esther at Once Upon a Crime Podcast. These five people especially have been good friends and cheerleaders, and I want to thank them. And I must insist, like a spoiled Victorian child stomping her foot so that her petticoat shows, that you listen to their podcast. If you are all interested in true crime and are not doing so, this must be remedied. That's Generation Y, Insight, and Once Upon a Crime. Hmm. Also, <laughs> there's the marvelous Nick and the Captain at True Crime Garage. For spooky storytelling based in history, there's Aaron at Lore. Cannot be beat. For horror, there's Alex and Andrea at Faculty of Horror, and I love it. They choose horror movies, and then they go deep with their sociology degrees, and they tear it apart, and they put it back together, and some symbolism, and just, ha, huh, it's wonderful. <laughs> and then, of course, for history and comedy, there's David Gareth at the top. And here's your book recommendation for this episode. The esteemed, not to be topped true crime author Harold Schechter has written a fiction series about Edgar Allan Poe becoming an unwilling and unwitting detective. It's terribly funny as well as frightening. The first in the series is called Nevermore in which Poe is hooked into a murder mystery by none other than Davy Crockett. I know that sounds ridiculous but it's hilarious. Uh, The more familiar you are with Poe's writing the funnier it is because Poe's character speaks in the style of Poe's writing. Um, I have the entire series. It stands right now at four books uh, listed in reading order on the website, and you can click through to purchase them on Amazon. 
And like I said, if you do so, if you click through and buy them or click through and decide to buy something else, you keep me in books, which basically keeps me alive. Until next time, if you haven't had a cupcake today, have one soon. They're happiness in a wrapper. I plan on celebrating my first episode with a gluten-free one shortly. And when you do, don't forget to get one to share. Perhaps with a stranger is a random act of kindness. That person in line behind you in Starbucks, perhaps? Just order it for them when you pay for your order and walk away knowing you left a smile at the counter. Because remember, when you do something like that, you're teaching someone else that when you just try and show up, no matter how difficult things are seeming, who knows, there just might be a cupcake. And since the Poe quote with which I began was rather tongue-in-cheek, I shall leave you with not one but two more that I think are appropriate. The first definitely to this episode, and both to this podcast. This is Carla, done babbling for now. Bye guys. That, which you mistake for madness, is but an over-acuteness of the senses. To die laughing must be the most glorious of all glorious deaths.